name. And I think we have Graham Elwood joining us now, <laughs> so I can stop ranting. Um, so Graham is a wonderful comedian. He is the host of the progressive comedian uh, comedy YouTube channel, The Political Vigilante. Um, he's went and performed for our troops in Afghanistan and made a film about that and is a big WikiLeaks supporter. So let's see if we can get him on here. <laughs> I think you're muted. Let's see. There. Hey. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Thank you so much. Sorry. I uh, I got a little turned around this morning, but I'm all I'm all good. I'm here. Hey, welcome. <laughs> I just ranted and rambled for a few minutes. To <laughs> the Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> My apologies. No worries. So how are you doing? I'm good. Um, it's uh, very hot here in Los Angeles, even early in the morning, but um, I'm doing all right. You know, it was just on the, uh, maybe a week and a half ago, it was on the Progressive Comedy Tour with Ron Placone, where we went to uh, five different states in five days. It was really cool. It was um, all red states. And so it was really impressive to see progressives coming out and many of them after the show were like you know there's a lot more of us here than you think everybody thinks we're all the red states are just <laughs> all a certain way and they're like it's it's there's a lot of different points of view um coming here so that was really cool and uh i'm also in the process of uh in the next week of up upgrading my studio for my uh political vigilante youtube show that's awesome yeah. So how did you first get into supporting WikiLeaks and Julian Assange? Well, I think I first started hearing about them probably during the, was it the, was the, the war in Iraq, I believe, when they started um, putting information out there. And I was, I was like, who, who, what is this? And who are these people? And I still myself hadn't, you know, I was never a huge fan of the two party system, but I had, and I was realizing like when everyone was saying, oh, the media is uh, liberal, I was like, no, they're corporate. Um, and, but what I hadn't really quite woken up, and they were sort of my first awakening. Um, when, they, when this information was being put out there, and then I really started to pay attention to him when um, what was happening, even when under Obama, when they were showing the, the releasing the information and showing all of what's really going on over there. Because as a comedian, I'd been to Afghanistan three times, I've been to Iraq three times, and Kuwait four times, and was sort of confronted with what that what those wars were i mean i was i had so much respect for anybody the you know we had an all volunteer military there's no draft people were signing up and i had so much respect for people like i'm going to go overseas because i think this is the right thing to do but then was seeing sort of how it was being run from the top level and and how wikileaks was playing into information that they were releasing that i was like oh wow this is this is this isn't right. <laughs> and, and the, the abuse of power and I think really like Chelsea Manning and then it sort of WikiLeaks helped me wake up to Obama as someone I voted for twice. I worked on his campaign in 2008 and started to see, and I ha had all these, like a lot of people I was I thought he was going to be like a new FDR and there was going to be all this hope and change and all this, this radical reform. And then I was watching, um, reaction to, um, to Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning being put in prison. And I was like, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> he just seems like more of the same. And WikiLeaks was a, was a, really help but it was honestly I, when i really just started to then like 
when he was put in the basically he's, he's on he's in prison you know they put him in prison in the ecuadorian embassy that's what that is and then the crazy accusations against julian so it's really sort of a slow wikileaks was definitely running parallel to my slowly seeing that there's not much of a difference between the two parties um and that basically the dissemination of information and then you know the podesta emails was was like that really sealed the deal for me so it's been sort of a gradual as of my own um awakening has been um or just becoming more informed and you're seeing yeah so that's that's my that's my lengthy answer to your, <laughs> to your question <laughs> No, that's awesome. I love hearing everybody's backstories because it's all a lot of people are very similar, you know. Um, when Chelsea Manning put out the leaks, it kind of shocked America's conscience, you know. Everybody, no matter where you stood, at least back then, everybody was kind of just stunned by it. Um, so sorry, they just sent me some questions. That's all right. um, Add this real quick to the Chelsea Manning like so I just on the progressive comedy tour we were one of the shows we did was in Asheville North Carolina and uh this guy from Veterans for Peace was at the show and he introduced us and made this and then I did an interview with him that's on my YouTube channel and that was one of the things that woke him up he was in Iraq and was watching you know some of that video footage of them shooting reporters and, and and all this stuff. And he was like, I'm a part of this machine. And so like the Chelsea Manning leaks were part of his awakening. And then when he got out of the service, you know, he served in Iraq. He was like, I, I, I've got to wake his, his, you know, his mission is to tell young men and women in high school or whatever who are thinking about the military i just want you to know this is what's this is what it's being used for and you know it, it woke him up to the fact of like well we're not the good guys wait a minute we're just we're just doing stuff that isn't good and we're serving corporate interests and and all of that and so it was interesting to see his awaken to interview him a couple of weeks ago and he, his awakening was also tied to the Chelsea Manning leaks. Yeah, it's, they've done amazing things. So as you know, it's now been over a hundred days that he has been incommunicado. He can't go online, use the phone, have visitors, speak to the press. Um, what do you think that we can do as a concerned public and people who do support WikiLeaks? What, what do you, think the best course of action is i mean the trump administration's clearly cracking down and it feels kind of hopeless to a lot of people who support them what do you, what can we do to keep pressure up do you think well i think there's a lot of things we can do um well first i want to say i want to address the hopelessness um which is real and it's i i get it i get it but i would just point historically to a lot of situations that seemed really hopeless um, in America. I mean, the Vietnam War went on and on and it ended and it ended because of uh, pressure. It ended because of protests. It ended because of political pressure. Um, I'm not an advocate of, of, uh, violent unrest or rioting. I'm not in favor of that at all, but peaceful protests and sometimes going, I'm willing to get arrested to make my point. Um, which, that's not an easy decision to make. So I think we have to look at things historically where it did seem like it was never gonna end. I mean, you know, uh, Nixon ran on an anti-Vietnam campaign in 68 and he escalated the war. So a lot of people <laughs> were like, oh my God, what do we do? And so it's not gonna happen overnight. But, so I bring those up historically to then go to this this answer for your question people need to keep being vocal about it they need to you know doing stuff like this once a month or uh petition your lawmakers make it very clear this isn't right 
find whatever way you can to get this out to say, look what they're doing. And the point I always make, if they can do it to him, they could do it to you. They could do it to me. They could do it to anybody. Point that out. You know, they could do this. They could do this to to anybody. They could do this to Rachel Maddow. They could do this to Sean Hannity. They could do this to, I mean, they could do it to anybody if they wanted to. So I would, I would try to get everyone together and point that out. Yeah. That's the most frustrating thing for me is there's very few mainstream journalists and publishers who are, you know, supporting and actively speaking out for Julian. And it's like, don't you people realize that you could be next? Like anyone's favorite publisher could be next. I mean, Rachel Maddow has read Trump's tax returns on air. She actively, you know, asked for him and sought them. Um, you know, anybody who upsets the government could be in Julian's position next if we don't, you know, fight against this and speak out. Um, it's it's been it's crazy to watch because they're actively like not just um, ignoring the situation, but they're almost like cheerleading for his persecution. And it just seems so counterproductive to me because, you know, if you're in news, <laughs> you could be next. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, they definitely feel protected because they are pushing the, the, the corporate, <laughs> right. the corporate state, the military, whatever you want to call it, they're pushing their agenda. So they feel very much like they're protected. You know, Rachel Maddow, can go get Trump's tax returns because she's a, you know, she's the, the liberal, you know, uh, woman character within the, within the professional wrestling of American politics. You know, she's just playing a character. Sean Hannity is just playing a character. So, um, it's a good point you bring up. So maybe, maybe the, maybe the answer is going, um, to people, I mean, I don't know, petitioning the Rachel Maddows of the world and the Sean Hannity's of the world to let them know you could be next. I think that's good pressure. And I think I would put a lot of pressure on journalists that have big followings, excuse me, and big platforms and say, you could be next. I don't, why aren't you supporting this? Make it very clear. They could come get you. Right. Yeah. yeah all it takes is for, you know, a government that gets really angry at your work to be like, oh no, you're done. And you'll be in an embassy. <laughs> or worse. Yep. Um, so uh, what what have you personally been doing um, as far as WikiLeaks? And have you, you know, spoke to them or anyone involved with it? Or um, I don't I know, I'm not fully versed on your background with WikiLeaks. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't like spoken directly with the people at WikiLeaks. I've done some videos on it and um, they have retweeted some of those videos and stuff like that, which I appreciate. It's something that I discuss a fair amount. We talk about once a week, I do a super a live super chat uh, on my channel. And it's something we discuss a lot that usually gets brought up. I just have an open chat and, and my followers can ask me all kinds of questions and we get into all kinds of different debates and discussions. And the Julian Assange thing and WikiLeaks is brought up constantly. And you know, I mean, if, even with reference to the Podesta emails, I always say the Podesta emails are the Podesta emails. The DNC likes to kind of distract and say how they get them and who did the server and it's blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, yeah, but they say what they say. And so for me, I, I just try to get the word out as much as possible on my show. I, I call all my followers. I say, you're all political vigilantes. It's up to all of you to do your own research and get involved on your local levels. They all, um, and so I've encouraged people to get the word out about what's happening with Julian Assange and petition their own lawmakers and even their local media to put the word out about this because it could happen to your local newscaster in your in your local town. I mean, it could happen to the beat reporter on your local paper. It could happen to the the the, the woman or man that has a blog, has a political blog. I mean, so I just I just kind of keep spreading that word and that message where any in all places that I can. Right. 
So you're talking about how, you know, your channel is obviously very progressive. And I, I think there's been kind of this narrative that only the right really supports WikiLeaks right now because of the Podesta emails. Have you found that that's not really true? I mean, it seems like there's still a lot of support for him from the left, but the Democrats seem to push this narrative that like everybody thinks he's this Russian spy and things like that. Um, do you think that there is? Well, that's, that's the, that's the DNA. Right. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's that's a ridiculous. That is a ridiculous narrative that the oh, DNC. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> I agree. But. It is, and the DNC has, you know, through they're a massive corporate funded machine, um, just like the GOP, and so they have a lot of influence with the corporate media. But it's it's preposterous because so many of us on the left. You know, we saw it happen in real time, what what the DNC did to to Bernie Sanders. And when you start getting away from the identity politics that the DNC really likes to push because it helps keep people divided, anything is about distraction. Um, both parties are very good at keeping everybody distracted, right? If you're concerned just throw the word liberal on something and everyone ah, I hate them like they won't they won't they don't want to hear it and that's been a very effective marketing campaign even things that are like this policy is is better for everybody but we'll put we'll, the Republicans will say ah, liberal and they'll oh, we hate it we don't want to protect the environment we don't want health and health care because it's the liberals are, are, are forcing this on us and then so what the DNC has been very effective as is doing things that actively undermine progressive policies. And now I'm blaming the Republicans. The Republicans did it. It's like, well, wait a minute. So like, let's go back a little bit. When Obama was in power and had the House and the Senate, they could have passed any number of progressive policies, could have done all of this sweeping legislation. And then they, they tried to blame it on the Republicans. And I was like, you guys had control. What, what, what are you talking about? So that's their tactic. And once you start to see their tactic, then this this Russia narrative just is laughable and makes sense. And there's so many people on the left that are like, wait a minute, you guys cheated. The Republican Party doesn't have these nonsense super delegates. That's a scam. It's a, like we saw it. We saw states that voted for Bernie and the super delegates gave it to Hillary. Yep. We saw that that happened. That's not a conspiracy. I'm not a wing nut progressive. Like that, that's, that's that happened. And, and then I've said this to, to neoliberal friends of mine that are like, Oh, the, and I'm like the Russia narrative. I go, let me show you this graph. The highest spending of the, the, the defense industry was in the early eighties when we were at the height of the cold war. It went down. The lowest it was at was in 2000. And oh, wait, well, then 9 11 happened. <laughs> now it's back down again. It's, you just look at this chart, it's down again. And you're like, oh, they just went, well, we need, we need, we need a new Red Scare. We need, a, we need the big bad Soviet Union. And, and again, then everyone says, well, Putin's awful. So you're a Putin supporter. No, 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 no. Putin has done some. He's ex-KGB. I'm not, I don't think he's soft and cuddly. I think he's done some pretty awful things, but so have we. Like, let's get rid of this narrative that America, Obama who got the Nobel Peace Prize and he took us from two wars to seven. He drone strike the Middle East. How many, I mean, how, how many poor brown people did he kill with his drone strikes? As did Hillary. I don't, you know, so, so, I think progr progressives within the, the progressives have been like this WikiLeaks Kremlin puppet thing. We all laugh about it. Like one, like I, uh, on my super chat, it's not there right now, but I have a red cover on one of my surfboards and I always say, Oh, I was out surfing with Putin. Like that's, that's like a joke we make because you're immediately labeled and it's it's the reactionary tactic of of both sides but in this case the dnc to call anybody a, anybody a kremlin puppet but then you just stick with the facts like um the again the podesta emails say what they say that like 
And here's, and everyone goes, oh, they're crazy, they're fake. Well, actually, no, not one single person has come forward. You could easily do it. So if if I said, you here's some emails that you put out that said all this crazy stuff, you could go, no, 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 here's the actual email. You could refute it like that. Not one of those emails has been refuted. No one. So, And people, something I like to point out pretty often because I feel like people just forget this, uh, WikiLeaks also released Sarah Palin's emails. It's not like they only target Democrats. Yes. And I spoke to Sarah Palin recently about this, and she was like, I love WikiLeaks. And I was so wrong to attack them for it, for releasing my emails because they did the right thing. Like, she's like, that's, you know, it was a political campaign and they had them and they released them. She's like, but I don't think that they're partisan. I don't think that they were targeting me because I was a Republican. I think that they were targeting me because. I was running for office and they wanted transparency. And it's it's amazing because you see how these two things were have been treated so differently and the public seems to just have erased this from their mind and they're like, oh, WikiLeaks only goes after Democrats. But oh. I mean, Washington Post set up an entire volunteer team to go through Sarah Palin's emails. They didn't do that <laughs> with the DNC. Um, right. So it's it's like who's really the one that's biased here? It's not WikiLeaks. <laughs> it's not WikiLeaks at all. It's not WikiLeaks at all. And 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 when you really get into it, I mean that's a that's a great point. And it's like when they were when they were going after when they were releasing stuff about the Bush administration, everyone's like, yay, WikiLeaks. When Glenn Greenwald was going after the Bush administration, everyone was like, yay, Glenn Greenwald. And then when they went after the Obama administration, like, oh, you're and it's just like that is part of the problem is like, it's, you bring up Sarah Palin, it's such a great point. All the Hillary supporters, like, if you don't vote for Hillary, you must hate women. I said, oh, then you all voted for the first ever uh, female vice president? Right. Oh, you Why? Well, I didn't like her policies. Oh, I didn't like Hillary's policies. That's why I didn't vote for her. And then you see how full of shit they are. So if you don't vote for Hillary, you hate women. But I voted for Jill Stein. Oh, I helped Trump win and I'm a Kremlin puppet. Wait a minute. I voted for a female doctor. <laughs> so <laughs> she's bad. Um, Nina Turner, who wasn't allowed to speak at the Democratic National Convention. Wait a minute. So no one was in outrage that a black woman was denied to speak at the Democratic Convention? No one, there was no out, there was no, Joanne Reed didn't get mad. Donna Brazil didn't go up in arms. Nobody got mad at this. Oh, you're full of shit. So every at every turn, we're just seeing they're full of shit. And and while there's so much about Sarah Palin, I do not agree with the fact that she would say thank you for being transparent. As like, okay, yeah, you know? I was shocked personally. I mean, I I'm right wing, obviously, but um, I I still wasn't expecting her to be like as excited about WikiLeaks as she was, considering the fact that, you know, it happened to her too. And she was just like, I was such a stinker back then. It was really funny. Oh. But uh, <laughs> she's very likable. Like, I mean, even if you disagree with her policies, like she, as a person, she's just very likable. So it was, it was entertaining. <laughs> but I can't imagine anyone from the DNC ever having like that self-reflection. And granted, it took Sarah Palin a long time too. So maybe in a few years, somebody from the DNC will be like, wow, you know, maybe they were in the right. <laughs> but, I'd love to see it because they won't even acknowledge the lawsuit that was brought against them. You know, they won't even acknowledge. And, and, and you bring up Washington Post and it's such a great point and it really shows what the and this is something I would say to to conservatives who are like, ah, the liberals. I go, the Democratic Party is not liberal. It's pro-banking. It's pro-war. It gets money from the healthcare industry. And even some of its candidates get money from the NRA. So <laughs> the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos was given a $600 million by the CIA. So Hillary Clinton was the 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 defense contract the defense contracts that they wanted her in power because let me let me point something out about the Clinton Foundation. 20 countries, 20 Middle Eastern countries that donated to the Clinton Foundation all surprisingly got defense contracts when she was Secretary of State. 
that is what the, the Clinton Foundation is about. It's about buying influence with the Clinton family. And that's why she will not, she's going crazy since this election because they're going to lose that gravy train where they pay their daughter $100 million to run it. You know, and, and people are like, oh, the Clintons are so liberal. I go, liber- they, they're, they're pro-choice, they're pro-choice conservatives. That's it. That's it. That's their only, that's their only thing. They are so in favor of war. Talk to people in Haiti about the Clinton Foundation. They are, I, I think sometimes conservatives get mad because they're like, wow, they get away with way more shit than we do. I think that's, <laughs> that's what's, I feel like. <laughs> it's true. The, the whole system is set up, you know, to, to quote, um, I believe it's Noam Chomsky or might even be Nader. Uh, the, the difference between the two parties is the speed with which they'll drop to their knees for corporate benefactors. <laughs> That's it. We don't have a representative democracy. We don't have an open, honest, we should have an open debate and discussion. There's never a third party candidate on the stage during the presidential debates. The two parties control it. You have to have 13%. You know who set that? The two parties did. Right. So like the Washington Post is, is a a CIA mouthpiece. I mean, it's like the media used to be the watchdogs to power, right? That's what they did. They called out those in power and said, wait a minute. Now they're the lapdogs of power because you watch, watch. If you think Hannity and Rachel Maddow are so different, watch who's buying ad time during their shows. The same people, pharmaceutical companies, Boeing, American Petroleum Institute, the military, that's all they're doing. So it's like, they want us divided. They want us, um, and, and they'll do stuff like well, Julian Assange is a Kremlin puppet. I mean, that, 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 you know, and if you, if you, if you're on the left, you should just automatically hate WikiLeaks and without getting any information, you know, and if you're on the right, they're going to ask you to not get information on these ex- issues. They're just going to just line up with this. That's what they. That's what the. That's what they do. It's true, and you know, regarding Washington Post again, they've set up like anonymous ways that people can send them documents and information. They they tried to steal the WikiLeaks model while also not advocating for WikiLeaks. That alone makes my head explode it's so frustrating to me because it's like you guys have set up like channels for people to do the exact same thing that wikileaks does and somehow they're criminal and you're not i what yeah. <laughs> well washington post is probably hoping to get leaks to information and squash it right or use it for their own benefit or find out who's leaking it and go after them. That's what that's all set up. I wouldn't trust them as far as I can throw them. No, I absolutely obviously don't advocate for anybody <laughs> ever giving them anything. I'm just saying that they, you know, they've copied the WikiLeaks model and somehow still condemn the people that they're ripping off. I, it's mind blowing to me. And I've always laughed about that every time that I see them put out like a hit piece about Julian, like, you guys are biting his style, <laughs> but he's bad. All right. And they do that so flagrantly and they just, it's, it's, it, it's, it's insane. It's like, they just tell you the sky is green and you point at it and standing next to them and go, that's blue. You hold up a color palette and then they call you nuts. Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, what what do you think is going to end up happening? What do you, you know, what do you think is next? I know Ecuador's, you know, there's debate about whether or not he's still going to have asylum. And, you know, the Pence recently met with Ecuador. <laughs> what do you what are you thinking is happening? Well, the deep state needs him dead. So they're putting on all this pressure and this is what America does. This is how the American empire plays ball. And they, you know, if Obama went after this guy, of course Trump's gonna go after this guy and they're gonna put all this pressure on him because they can't have 
they need to shut WikiLeaks down. There's just no two ways about it. So they, and, and Julian Assange is the guy. I, I wonder what I would love is he's granted immunity and can go back and live his life and not live in solitary confinement. And I mean, that's what I would like to see. I think it is still possible, but I don't know. It's, it's really, it's really, I, I, I don't, I, it's such, that's why I'm, I don't have a clear answer for you because I don't know. I don't like, and I'm seeing what they're capable of doing. I mean, they falsely accused him of, of, of rape. I mean, they just, they'll throw out, they'll throw out anything. They'll throw out anything like whatever, well, pedophile, whatever they, whatever they got to do, they'll throw it out there. They'll throw out hot button things. They'll, I mean, um, so I don't know. I hope events like this and the pressure being put on and people realizing that this is what the American empire, which is, is a kleptocracy with oligarchs is doing and, um, big corporations run everything. So it's going to take resistance. You know, when you're fighting a massive opponent like this, you can't stand toe to toe with them. Sometimes, sometimes it's got to be death by a thousand cuts. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't want Julian to like, they get him or he dies or whatever. And, and like, I don't want him to be, to become a martyr in that way. The but I, I don't know. The plus side is that, you know, he's had no internet or anything. He, he hasn't been able to speak to press, but WikiLeaks has still continued going. I mean, there are other people behind WikiLeaks besides him. So even God forbid, if they, something did happen to him, they wouldn't be one of WikiLeaks. And that's, I think, a really important thing for them to remember <laughs> because, I mean, it would be a political disaster if they if anything happened to him and it wouldn't get rid of the WikiLeaks problem that they have because it's not just him. And there's a lot of people who would pick up the slack if anything did happen. So I think that there's at least some hope in that. I'm really happy that, you know, people have continued running his accounts while he's been unable to, um, just to, to show them that like, it's not just him. And, you know, if they did do something to him, then they, they their problem wouldn't be solved. Right. So, I think that's, that's one of the few glimmers of hope here. Um, well, you, well, you bring up a great point. And because they're coming at him so hard and more people are waking up to the importance of WikiLeaks, maybe that is the upside here is because they've gone after him so hard, more people are, I mean, again, what Sarah Palin said, like, I don't think Sarah Palin would have said that if they weren't going after Julian Assange that hard. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just guessing here, but like when you're getting uh, people from all sides and all different political walks going, this ain't right. And, you know, they did it to her and she's like, now that I'm away from this years of years, I'm glad they did it because we need transparency. I mean, that's telling you something. It's like when Tucker Carlson was the only one calling out the attack in, or the bombing in in Syria, I believe, when, when he was the only one saying, what are we doing? I was like, okay, like this shows you where we're at. Like, so maybe this extreme, I mean, I say this, like the Trump getting elected, I'm not a fan of it, but it's waking up a lot of people. A lot of people are getting more involved. They're seeing the system is broken. They're, they're, they're wanting to, participate and maybe maybe this hard going after Julian is what's what's needed because it's really showing you it's showing you what the American Empire is about and forcing their uh, military and corporate interests down everyone's throat and doing it however they can and the rest of the world for a while has been like hey you guys you're not the good guys 
And we have to, as Americans, we all have to kind of come to grips with that fact, be whatever your political affiliation is. We all have to kind of sit and go, hey, we're not the heroes, you know? And all of the Democratic presidents and all of the Republican presidents for the last 30 years, none of them have really been that big of heroes. They've all done a bunch of things like Goldman Sachs has been in every cabinet since Reagan. What does that tell you? Right. I, mean, I just like when anyone tells me that that the other party is bad, I always agree with them. And then I say, in the party that you're a big fan of, let me show you what they do. <laughs> but I refuse to register for a party here still. I, I'm registered as WikiLeaks party, even though there's technically no WikiLeaks party in the US. Well, maybe we should start one. Maybe that's what I comes agree. out of this to answer your question. Start we absolutely one. should. I, I was really hoping they would put it on my voter ID card, but instead they put other party. <laughs> they like refuse to print it. So. Yeah, that's that's I mean, maybe that's what comes out of all this is a, a viable third and fourth party, you know, like independent, a, a real third party. Maybe, you know, seeing what the numbers that Gary Johnson got and the numbers that Jill Stein got, maybe, I don't know, maybe those two parties get more steam or get more, or, or this a third party is started. Or I don't know, we start having debates with four candidates or five candidates like they did. Yeah, in Canada and every other Western we country. 51 candidates for Miss America. <laughs> we yeah. get two choices for president. <laughs> the most frustrating thing. <laughs> I know. And nowhere else would we do that. We only get, we, how many channels can we watch? How many streaming services? But yeah. what if we no, no, get ice cream and we get 31 flavors. Yes. <laughs> it's like insane. It's insane. It's insane. So what would you say to Julian? If, if Julian could get online right now and could watch this and maybe sometime he will be able to go back and watch him, what would you want to say to him while he's going through this horrible time period? Stop being such good buddies with Putin. No, I would, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would try to, well, I would try to make him laugh for sure. So I would, um, because I'm sure it's pretty dark for him. I would say, I would say, Julian, there's a bunch of people out here. Um, you know, look, look who's talking right now. A, uh, a, a conservative woman and a very liberal man are sitting here talking in support of you. And th that's what you've done. That's what you have brought to the table is two people that probably have very different views on a lot of issues who both agree the two-party system is bullshit and would both gladly join the WikiLeaks political party if it were to become an actual thing. So I would say you, it sucks what you're, it fucking sucks that you're going through this. It fucking sucks, but you are doing something. You are sacrificing in the highest way to make things better, to wake things up and to keep, people honest you are doing that in a way in a in, in a way that is more brave and you're being of service to your fellow human beings in in a way like is rare and so thank you for not acquiescing and thank you for for sacrificing for all of us yeah. And do you have anything else that you, you know, want to throw out there or any other thoughts that you've had about this that I maybe didn't ask about? <laughs> well, I would like, you know, the Sarah Palin thing, like, I would like to get more information, like anyone out there watching or anyone who has people who are like, oh, with Julian Assange just hates the Clintons. I'd be like, uh, go get the information to show all of the people from all of the different back political, all the candidates, all the governments he's gone after and go look at this list of people. There is no, the only through line is they're all powerful people abusing their power. That's the through line. And um, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And he's pointing that out. And 
that's what his his mantra has been from day one. I would watch some of the, you know, that the, I'm blanking on the name of that documentary that came out like a year or so ago that showed that the woman that was kind of behind the scenes with him. Oh, uh, Risk, right? Yes. Watch that, you know, watch some of his interviews. And I always tell people on my show, Political Vigilante, they're like, well, Graham, how do you argue with these, 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 these like, these Hillary supporters or these Trump supporters, they won't hear. I go, I always stick with the facts. I just stick with the facts. I don't get into any supposition or any conspiracies. I stick with the facts. So with the Julian, he called out Sarah Palin. He called out this per. He called out all of them. He's called out Bush, Clinton, Obama. He's called them all out. And what does that tell you? That's the thing that the, 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 the paradigm shift I want so many people to wake up to is get out of this red state, blue state. Get out of it. Get out of it. Think about how they're screwing all of us over. They don't want the 99% to get together. They don't want us. This kind of, this has to terrify them because this isn't on mainstream media. A, 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 a conservative and a, you know, a vegan hippie surfer talking, uh, agreeing. They don't want, this doesn't, this doesn't fit on MSNBC or, or Hannity or what. It doesn't fit on any of that because they want us to argue. Right. You know? And know this, as I, and I will say this over and over and over. If they can do it to him, they can do it to you. They could do it to me. They could do it to whoever you watch on TV, Chris Matthews, Joy Ann Reed, Tucker Carlson, whoever you watch and you think they're speaking the truth, great. Just know if that person goes against the narrative, goes against the machine, they get taken out. You can play a part in the, like I say, the professional wrestling of the two-party system, but if they tell you to take a dive in round three, guess what? You better go down. I mean, I always point to Bill Maher. When he was doing a show on ABC, he was calling out things, the, 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 the war machine, and then they pulled him off the air they sat him down and said, Bill, get your mind right. And they put him on HBO and now he can just be as neoliberal and blame Jill Stein and do his bullshit to his rich Hollywood friends and he's not seeing anything. And it's like, that's how they do it. They either threaten you or they buy you. Yeah, it's true. And Julian can't be bought. WikiLeaks can't be bought, so a huge threat i mean we need more of it we need so much more wikileaks um there's i i mean i can't even think of another outlet that has any kind of reach whatsoever that would be willing to publish the things that they do or you know i would say support wikileaks yeah they're they're donation based right so mm -hmm. Yeah, I always tell people to go to WikiLeaks shop and buy tote bags and t-shirts because it's pretty awesome. Like I live in DC and I'll wear WikiLeaks shirts to Senate hearings and uh, <laughs> tote bags and it starts conversations everywhere I go. <laughs> like people are either really angry at me and I can usually kind of win them over or they'll come up and be like, high five, How, what can I do? How do I help? And it's awesome. It's a you know, it's a good way to meet people at the very least. Um, and it hasn't caused any fist fights yet. So <laughs> I highly recommend everybody go to WikiLeaks shop and, and buy some stuff because licensing fees go to uh, their legal fees and running their website. That's awesome. I'm going to, that's the thing that I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I point that out on my show. So yeah. They've got good stuff. They've got like 1984 clocks and all kinds of all kinds of goodies. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. I don't know what else. What else can we uh, talk about regarding Julian here? I think. Uh, well, I would say this to anybody out there that's working somewhere where you have information that you could be a whistleblower. Use WikiLeaks. And 
I can't be, I, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, just do it. Like I can't begin to know anyone, what your, what your situation is at, where you're working, the danger you're under, whatever. I, I will just ask you, you know, to consider the greater good and you can do it anonymously. That's a big part of WikiLeaks is he protects his sources. He, I mean, that was like, he will never give up a source and other places have given up sources. Actually, just two days ago, um, Charles Gasparino from Fox News tweeted out, you know, I just heard about Trump complaining about the use of anonymous sources. For, for the record, he was one of mine for years. And Julian's team quote tweeted it and they were like, in case you ever wondered, like, we're probably the only people who won't give up our sources because you know, they still to this day won't even call Chelsea Manning the source. They're like our alleged source. <laughs> and she openly admits it. Uh, no. They still don't. They won't. They won't. They didn't, they, would, they wouldn't say anything about Seth Rich. They wouldn't do any of it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, it's, and it's just so, an interview after interview after interview, he just won't do it. I mean, it's just like, it's just so, and, and it's, you can sell, you can know, I've never met the man personally, but I've met people of conviction. And when people of conviction are pretty calm because they just know I have this, there's no dilemma to be in because I have this real, very clear, I'm not giving up sources. I'm gonna put information out there that's been verified. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's that. And I'll and I'll be in jail and die if I have to. Hopefully it does not it does not come to that. It's my biggest fear. <laughs> um yeah. I hate even thinking about that. It makes me crazy. Cause he's such a he's such a good person. I have met him. I met him in March and he's very warm and I feel like he's always portrayed as this like stuffy pompous snobby guy and that's just so not true like all those like hollywood films and documentaries that they've done um he comes across as a little bit stiff you know <laughs> and he's just he's not he's very warm and intelligent he's a person and people forget how human he is because of how he was portrayed and um well he yeah. would have to care he would have to have a big heart to do this he does <laughs> All right. Well, is there any final words? I don't want to keep you over the time, but do you have anything else you want to add? No, thank you so much. And, um, you know, uh, if anyone wants to check out my show, Political Vigilante, it's on YouTube. Uh, my website's GrahamElwood.com. And, you know, thank you and, and Susie Dawson and everybody else for putting this together. I, I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. I'll make sure to watch your channel. Cool. <laughs> um,